Hello and welcome to Walk and Talk. The date on the Anlian calendar is 321121. Um, t I mean, uh, 4 2. And that means the date on the Gregorian calendar is uh, Tuesday, September 2nd, 2024. Um, today I would like to talk about. A, um, a very interesting bit of thought, um, and that is what systems of belief are the most utilitarian? Um, and that is, um, and is going to go from some ones that I'm familiar with to some ones that I created. Um, so we'll start with Judaism. Judaism is um, supposed to be the story of an all-knowing God who knew exactly where the universe was going to go and made laws for a specific people about how um, they would interact with that universe. But what it actually shows in the Torah is how different... Uh, how different conflicts gave rise to different laws. How people, um, how people by um, by experimenting and seeing what happened when they did a certain thing, would um, decide God didn't like that thing, and they would make a rule against it in the culture. Uh, so, the way that you can see this is there is rules like when Onan uh, discovered Onanism was seen as a bad thing because um, he didn't uh, because he uh, wasn't able to spread his family's seed as it were, and um, when Moses uh, came out of Egypt, he wanted to distance himself from, or he wanted to distance Judaism from the worship, actually, it was a, something different at the time, but it was distance them, distance the people that he was with from uh, the worshipers of Baal, who ate a calf in its mother's milk. So because of that, Jews were not allowed to eat um, milk, or eat dairy and meat at the, in the same meal um at all and they still aren't um and that means that um that means that um you can't have a have a cheeseburger for example you can't have a bacon cheeseburger um pork from what i've known was actually foregone because of its association with trichinosis, which is a disease that's caused by a parasite that can be consumed and then finds it and then burrows into your muscle tissue after you eat it. So if you uh, if you eat pork, you might have trichinosis parasites in your muscle tissue. And if pork likewise eats something with trichinosis in it, um, they will get it in their muscle tissue, and then when you eat it, uh, when you eat their muscle tissue, you get trichinosis. Um, this is not so much of a concern with modern farming, and the um, and that's kind of the problem with Judaism is that there's uh, no way of knowing when a law stops being utilitarian. You, you could just be left with all the laws forever, and that's what Orthodox Jews deal with. Um, and then also some of their laws sort of contradict modern morals. So it, um, so it makes them kind of alienated from, from modern society. Um, then there's um, then there's conservative and reform Jews. Conservative and reform Jews come up with this idea of like how they can determine what laws they can drop 
and what laws they can keep. And this ends up being just sort of up to philosophical discussion, which is fairly good. Um, we'll say it, um, we'll say it is, um, very, um, you'll say it's effective enough as long as they're not isolated from people that they also affect, like in the case of the Palestinians. Um, the, um, let's see, uh, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is Christianity. Uh, Christianity is actually a terrible system. Uh, the reason that we think Christianity is a good system is because we're doing it wrong. And our, our people in America are generally doing it wrong. People in America tend to believe that God still cares about the morals of the Torah, but they care that you, that you do, that you enact them according to the beliefs of other people who could be affected by your actions. And if, if you do that, then you go to heaven, which instead of being a normal heaven, or instead of being one heaven, like in the Bible, is a different heaven for every belief system that exists. And that it, and, and that way your ideas would be perfectly aligned with the people who you spend eternity with and you wouldn't get into arguments and you wouldn't get into fights and you wouldn't, and you wouldn't, um, threaten them, uh, by being who you, na by doing the things that you naturally did. Um, American Christianity is fine, but real Christianity is terrible. And I'll tell you why. Um, real Christianity says that, says that Jesus made all, um, made all of the laws void. The only, um, the only thing that you have to do to go to heaven as a Christian is you have to say you're a, or you have to, um, be a Christian. You have to, um, do what Jesus, um, or you have to say that you are subservient to Jesus. And when you say you're subservient to Jesus, well, actually, where was I going with this? So, um, what that means is that, like, some actual Christians will also say that if you, if you seek redemption for your sins with Jesus, um, you don't have to you don't have to actually stop doing them. You don't actually have to break the habits. And if you, and that of course was created because they wanted to say that their redemption did something, um, even though it didn't do anything in this world, but it doesn't help this world. It doesn't. Um, so if you like, um, so you could be a mobster like in The Sopranos, and and just go to your confession in your Catholic church and then keep murdering people. And, you know, there's nothing inherently motivating him to do anything about that. I'm not saying that most Catholics are murderers. I'm saying that it could justify that. Um, I'm so ready to talk about my next thing. Um, so remember I talked about how heaven in American pop or in like the Simpsons or family guy is this collection of different states that where you, um, where if you, if you, um, follow the law of any religion, you go to that religion's heaven. Um, anyway, um, you follow the law of any religion, you go to that religion's heaven. Um, my design for Anlia is a system where you create that on earth. 
you create a so it really has to do with like modern modern legal structures there's this so the way that modern legal structures work is that any crime that you commit gets you sent to jail or prison and jail and or prison um accomplishes two purposes one is to get you away from people who could be victims and one is to get you to reform usually by making you very uncomfortable um what i would do is in anlia is that i would create a i would create a sec a sector encompassing city or a social environment capsule for every combination of laws and when you break a law you get sent to the sec that doesn't have that except sec to all the sects that don't have that law and so what that does is it keeps you away from potential victims but instead of um instead of making you reform it makes you consider whether you want to reform because if what you did is bet is good in your own morality or if it's good for you um you can just live in that place where people are doing it to you and you are doing it to them forever um that we don't need to change people's minds when they're when their thing works um however if you want it, or if you don't like having the same thing done to you you can go to the holding sack which has um <clears throat> which has um, restraint for that crime. So you, you're wearing the suit that locks in place when you, um, when you try to commit the crime. And then eventually um, you'll use this mathematical formula called DTOT v mot to determine when uh, you can come back to the regular sec or the test sec. And um, that will determine when it's unlikely that you would have um you would have um omitted to omitted to do the crime up to this point if you still had the random immutable quality to do it and that's basically why it excels over um that's basically why alien morality excels over modern morality it's this idea that that pe the mon modern morality has this idea that people can just not do something if it's in their nature. And Anlian morality says, no, that takes a lot of effort and it takes and it takes um, self-determination in order to decide that they want to do that. So they have to. They have to go through a self-determined process, not a punished process. Um, it's it's kind of immoral to to punish someone when they don't do something if that thing is not something they can do, or not punish someone if they do something if not doing that thing is the thing that they cannot do. But the um, then when I came into the idea of, um, of defining the individual laws, I came into trouble because I took the most heinous laws, took eight most heinous laws. They're on, they're on another, um, YouTube, there are, they're on another video. Um, and I made them the, the laws that vary by sec. Uh, the only law that, that is, that does not vary by sec is that every sec has to let you go out if you commit a crime. They cannot, uh, they can, they can keep a record that keeps you banished from other places, but they can't hold you inside themselves. Um, that basically no imprisonment is the only constant law. Um, this, um, this system is supported by a lot of technology, which I also have a lot about on my YouTube channel. Um, you can look at Stardust Anlia. Um, but now I'm coming into a new idea, which is that um, 
which is that it's all based on these, well, going back to the beginning, it's based on these conflicts. It's based on these progressions where you go from one need to another. Uh, there's, um, I'm going to describe this in detail because, um, my, um, because I haven't described this in my, in detail on my YouTube channel yet. Um, so, um, the first knee, so these, um, the creation of laws tends to climb up the, the set of needs, but you can also climb, you can also go any which way on the set of needs, um, in the, uh, in any sort of interaction. And, um, oh, I'm getting so hot because I didn't, uh, because I turned the air conditioner off because the, uh, because I, because the phone is in the air conditioner and it would be really loud. But, um, it goes up the set of needs. You can go, you can explain any interaction with um with these needs and the needs are on the bottom continuing to do what defines you so if you do something that um so if you do something and you see it as something that you do that is the most basic form of yourself and changing that behavior is like a little death um, then there's keeping the body alive. Keeping the body alive inv invokes everything from, uh, everything from food to shelter to money. Food, shelter to money. Um, money because it buys food and shelter. Uh, then there's, um, creating a network. Creating a network is, um, is sort of a a more sort of a list of a high higher needs or things that aren't quite explained in food or things that aren't quite explained in keeping the body alive like if you if you want sex sex is in there um if you want um if you want um Let's see what else is there. If you want to just tell jokes, telling jokes is in there. If you want some sort of status symbol that goes beyond um, what you um, need to survive, that's in there. Uh, then the next level is creating a legacy. Creating a legacy um, is um, mainly um, a is mainly the need of a uh, of some sort of person to carry on your legacy. You can also write your legacy into a book as an alternative. Um, you could just leave the book underground and have it dug up in a time circle capsule. Uh, sorry, time capsule. Um, you leave the book. Uh, you could have a law. A law could um, tarnish somebody else's legacy. So, like, for example, if somebody is hitting, that's just the thing that kids do a lot. So, so they might not want to change from who they are from when they were a kid. And they just, and they just keep doing that. So somebody else says, this is hurting me. This is making me, this is injuring me and keeping, and making me not able to survive as well. I'm going to, that's need two, and then I'm going to make this law need three that says, um, actually need four that says, um, that says, um, you can't hit, and, and, and anyone who hits will have their legacy tarnished. Um, now, typically, you, you see, like, one thing, um, usually, typically, you see, um, you see need three invoked first. So so people will try to isolate um, the hitter from the non-hitters instead of instead of just saying it's wrong. 
axiologically. Um, the same thing goes for any law, um, including sex crime. Sex crime was religious. I, I'm pretty convinced that this is the case. That this is how it happened. Uh, sex crime was religious in nature. Societies were trying to keep um, legacy from falling or keep legacy from being distributed away from uh, the people who had earned it um, by um, by starting a family. And so they kept women from having sex outside of their marriage. And then because women were having sex, because women were, we'll say, uh, being forced to have sex outside their marriage, and they were punished anyway with death, um, the women got a very strong trauma response to um, sex outside of a very specific set of, of um, parameters, and then that became our modern sex crime. Um, then you have, then you have, like, um, segregation. Segregation was a matter of, segregation was a matter of, um, was a matter of first, um, black people were forced to work against their will in order to, um, in order, or sorry, they were taken out of this work against their will. Um, and then they were so that they could, you know, have autonomy and keep this, continue to do things that define me in a more authentic way. Um, then, then certain groups um, began to feel like there was going to be a rebellion. So they separated the blacks from the whites and then they and then in the blacks having um having gotten the right to vote utilized this to make the law that segregation was bad basically um and um so as you can see, most of these things are basically like just the result of conflict. They're not the result. They're not the inherent result of. Um, they're not the inherent result of of right and wrong. They're not the inherent property of the universe and what what's right and what's wrong. Um, however, they are still traumatizing or. Or any, or they um, they affect people in the ways that people say they affect them. Um, my approach is to take these um, these conflicts and then um, and then um, think about them and think about smaller conflicts like everyday conflicts like arguing with my mom or or anything that I could want to do for myself or anything that um, anything that society does as a whole even seeing like where the next step is and and come up with a way to compromise with everyone getting their needs met um, and that way, and that way the conflict can end. I think that the main way to do that in, uh, I think that the main way to do that in a, um, the main way to do that in these big societal conflicts is to take the um the way that or sorry is to take the last step 
where, one, where the last person has something taken away from them and then figure out some way that this person can give this thing back to themselves using, or this um, entity can give the thing back to themselves using some other um, thing that they have access to personally. And that is a, um, and that is a, um, Now, I think is the best thing you can do at this point in time. I did try to do this before by like going inward when people were, when I knew that everyone else was going to fight me on it if I tried to ask them for it. But at this point, um, I think that, I think that I have, you know, more autonomy. I can, I have things that I can help myself with. You know, and these things, and I guess that means I'm an adult, but I, I have things I can help myself with. I don't need to, um, all right. Um, my nose, it, cause I've been talking for two hours on and off, uh, working with this, um, working with this, um, this camera and trying several takes of this. Um, I'm gonna say, see you in the future, future Devin.